Chapter 14, Beyond Morning. We've made it. And we got a new apartment. Yay. Looking good. I realized in the days that followed that my medical leave was at least partially to protect me from the fallout of disobeying a direct order from Endgame's mysterious council. Which was somewhat less mysterious after two heated meetings with them. Meetings, of course, being used loosely since I didn't see them in person. Obviously. Just a digital display with blanked out silhouettes. I'd never been known for my temper, but those people had a way of getting under my skin. You had to personally show up and remind them he had given me a directive to rest. And he at least had no qualms about calling them stupid to their faces. Let's go you! I love you so much. <laughs> I'm sad he's the last boy. I love that guy. So that was entertaining. The council didn't issue a formal reprimand, but they assured me they would be watching. Always watching, Morgan. And contemplating where to place me after my two-week leave. As if that was at all frightening. I took a page out of Magnus's book, smiled politely, and said, Please do. Magnus did a very, very poor job of not laughing. <laughs> yes. But they left me alone after that, shocked Pikachu. I had also been spending a lot of time down in the lab. Okay. Olsen, I owe you an apology for my theory. I'm sorry I assigned bad motives to you, and uh, I hope we can still be friends after all that. Endgame had issued a public statement about the incident in Pythia. Though they tended to tread lightly in Delphine, there were raids of three more facilities house housing relics. The Delphine government was put on notice that illegal relic research violated numerous international treaties. It was a whole situation, and it had dominated, dominated the news since the story first broke. The activity Magnus had discovered in the middle of the ice turned out not to be related to our Fisher King. Where he was, no one knew. I imagined he wasn't too happy with Endgame right now, though. As for the relics acquired from the auction in Pythia, the research team had ca cataloged and locked most of them away. That one at the end there, that one was sealed in a vault in some isolated dome out in the Trinity Desert. Even if I could reliably engage with Arrayan Tech now, no one wanted to deal with that one. Including me. The others, though... Well, let's just say we had made more progress on understanding array and technology in the last few days than they'd made in the centuries humans first arrived to our callus. It was thrilling and a little overwhelming to be at the center, but I was living for it, to the point Caleb had gotten used to coming and dragging me out of the lab every day. You're supposed to be on leave. There are three days left and I don't think you've rusted for a single day. Between this and decorating the new flat... I am on leave. It's my choice if I want to spend it down here. Or decorating a new flat. The flat isn't the problem. You are still not supposed to be using your psi much, though. I'm not using my psi that much. At the moment. Morgan. Fine. I'll stop for today. Good. Because I'd hate to have to carry you out of here. Again. I'd hate to have to watch you try to do it. Again. I'd hate to have to throw you both out of the lab for causing a ruckus over this. Again. Fine, fine, we're going. I'll be back to- In a few days. She'll be back in a few days because she will rest for the remainder of her leave. Like she was supposed to. I'm sure you'll all survive without her. Fine. Come on. Let's get out of here for a while. Maybe you'll actually eat dinner at a reasonable time tonight. I suppose. Well, 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 look at all of us. Are we on a double date? Because that's cute. I mean, I have to say the number of times I thought I'd go on a double date with Caleb was approximately zero until today. Well, I'm glad I called that one, at least. Not going to be above the number one if you don't stop being annoying about it. To be fair, Ari was going to be here. He just said he felt he might be out of place. Oh, don't break my heart like that, Morgan. Not like this. I'd never have figured him for feeling like a fifth wheel, but I guess even he can notice things like that sometimes. I'm glad to see you're in good spirits, and not letting all the council's whining get to you. 
Well, I already knew they weren't happy about my actions back then. Though, considering how many lives I saved, you'd think they'd be grateful. They're wary of anyone they think they can't control. And, well, your abilities frighten them. You can do things no one else can. You can mimic king ranks. You can manipulate array and technology. They're the ones that dragged me into Endgame, so I guess they can blame themselves for having a problem child to deal with now. Not like you're the only problem child at Endgame. Not even the only one on the Guard. The Guard is basically made up of problem children. Truth. It's true. But there's more to it than that. Oh? Do share. That Fisher King guy. They think he's an F-class queen like you. Makes the second one we're aware of. And both of you are different from all the other queens on record. But Brennan, he said that he was the result of experiments. Or at least implied it. Yeah, he tried his best to scrub all data about himself. Or someone did anyway. But he's just a kid, and a kid is no match for Magnus. If it was him. So Magnus found some information on him. Yeah, none of it nice. We know Nyx cloned him. Nyx being an arm of the Delphine government. A secret one, of course. And we know they used DNA they got from Nutera. Nutera? It was a genome map and DNA sample from Earth. The data was pretty scrambled, so Magnus is still looking into it and trying to get all the details straight. All we know is there was some Esper from the 21st century that had his DNA mapped. And Brennan was cloned from that. Shout out, William! DNA from Earth? But that means there were espers on Earth centuries before they were discovered on Arcalis. It's quite the puzzle, isn't it? How did Nyx get their hands on DNA from New Terra, of all places? And on top of that, this guy has some worrying abilities. I guess that issue with Sylvia has everyone on edge, too. That creep. I'd like to know how he pulled that off. She obviously wasn't herself. I'm not sure there's anything of the original Sylvia left in there at all. I didn't go prying too deep, but it felt like... I could have. She felt like a corpse. I'm sure Jack's pulling his hair out trying to find her, but there might not be a happy ending there. Magnus thinks that kid revived her with a nanosystem. He said he's wondered before if it would be possible. He was surprised someone else could make it work. Between that and the guy's skills with relics. But at least we know there's no replicating one. Even if he resurfaces, and he will, it won't be with a plan like this. That was true. He'd probably never have this kind of opportunity again. Especially not since we were watching now. We were pretty sure he had ended up with around 50 or 60 relics of various sizes. There were still nearly 20 relics unaccounted for. But with my newfound understanding of them, it wouldn't be as easy to cause problems as before. I was working to teach Magnus to deal with them as well as helping decode the technology so others could understand it better too. We hadn't gone public with that nugget of information yet, but eventually we would have to. We resolved this situation, but with Brennan still at large, no one doubted we'd encounter him again. It was just about when and how. So I was just going to try to enjoy this moment with friends and this peaceful time as long as I could. Yay, Kayla passionate ending. Unlocked. You know, the Council floated the idea of keeping you down in the research division instead of having you on active field duty. Is that so? I thought they wanted to flaunt their new queen rank to the world. They do, but only if she's an obedient little minion. You are already on record as a troublemaker. I can't believe they're mad that I saved lives. It's the disobeying part that annoys them. I disobeyed them because their order was stupid and I wanted to save lives. It's the principle of the matter. They don't enjoy seeing us make our own decisions. Well, screw them. Please don't. That privilege is mine alone and I'm not inclined to share it. Caleb, please. Damn you. Heat crept into my face as I looked away, but there was already a smile forming on my face. 
He laughed and wrapped an arm around my shoulder, pulling me closer. Adorable. Frustrated as I was at the time, you and I both know you did the right thing that day. No matter how pissed they are that you ignored their orders. I'm not a fan of field work, given my experiences with it, and I do want to help the research team for a while. I mean, I'm the only one that can. So far, Magna still hasn't been able to work out the trick to engage with the relics. I don't want to give up on field work, though. And I don't think it's realistic to think I can hide in the research division. Besides... I leaned against him, sliding an arm around his waist as we walked. Someone's got to keep an eye on you and keep you safe. It's my job to protect you, not the other way around. I want to work with you, though. Kayla paused, pulling away and setting his hands on my shoulders. That's inevitable. We're still teammates. Even if you stayed in the research division permanently, I'm still your rook. I'll always be yours. Aww, that is so freaking sweet! That statement sent pleasant butterflies swirling through my stomach. He leaned to kiss me, right there on the street corner, pulling me closer. I let him do it. Until it got heated enough, I was worried about the show we were putting on and pulled away. Maybe we should go back to your place. I think we should definitely go back to my place. Ari needs to teach you some damn teleportation. I think this is the only route where Morgan didn't use teleportation in, in some, some way. How interesting. Well, this time we'll just have to walk. Race. Walk quickly. <laughs> By the time we reached my flat, though, I was in agreement with Caleb. I needed to learn this teleportation thing soon. As soon as we were inside with the door shut, he pinned me to it, planting a fierce kiss to my lips. I didn't hold back the soft moan at the sudden pressure of his mouth, his body. I let out a quiet gasp as one of his hands slid under my shirt and up my side. The desperation in his touch was like a man who'd been holding back for years. But I knew that, at most, it had been since last night. <laughs> Girl, he didn't put him on blast like that. I smiled against his mouth, enjoying the bold way his hand snaked up my back, then down again. Hello? <laughs> and then he punched me in the face. And suddenly he stooped, his hands going to the back of my thighs as he lifted, then pressed me firmly against the door with a soft thud. Ah! Okay, I approve of that. Mm. The small noise of protest I made against his kiss went ignored. I clung to him, wrapping my legs around his waist, half in fear of falling and half because of the dizzying way he was rubbing against me. He groaned against my lips before his mouth traveled to the side of my neck, nipping me just hard enough to elicit a soft yelp. My fingers tangled in his hair as he nibbled my earlobe, then traced the outside edge of my ear with the tip of his tongue. I want you. My mouth went dry as one of his thumbs ran circles around the soft skin beneath my shirt. He always had this effect on me, sending me reeling headlong into desire in an instant. And I was helpless to do anything but whimper a desperate yes against his insistent lips as he kissed me again. It was the sound of muffled voices from the hall that made me finally squeak out a protest at our location. R room because there was no way I wanted random passersby to sense us having a little tryst against my front door. Is it a tryst if it's in your own flat? I I'm asking for a friend. Caleb let out a groan of frustration when I tried to wriggle away from him, and there was a moment I thought he wouldn't let me go. But as soon as my feet were on the floor again, he swept me into his arms and carried me straight to the bedroom. Heck yeah! I'm, I'm headcanoning it was a, a princess, a, a bridal style carry, okay? I'm, I'm just saying. I took the opportunity to lean closer and kiss the side of his neck, giving it a playful nibble just to retaliate for the way he always did it to me. His fingers twitched at the sudden contact, and his grip on me tightened as his steps sped up. <laughs> I grinned against his skin, biting harder and sucking hard enough to leave a mark, even though I knew he'd make me suffer for it in a few minutes. He hissed, drawing in a sharp breath between clenched teeth. Seconds later, I was on the bed with him leaning over me, a devious smile on his face as he tugged his jacket and shirt off. So that's how it's going to be today. Complaining? Not even a little. I leaned up to place a kiss against his bare chest, feeling the heat rolling off him. 
His hand found its way to the back of my head, and this time he didn't hold back the groan as I took time to explore every inch of exposed skin, down to his abdomen, and then below his navel. I looked up at him, and from this vantage point his eyes were closed to near slits. His breathing hitched when our gaze met, and he was suddenly catching my face to pull me up to him for another fevered kiss. It was always so easy to make him lose control. I don't think I ever quite enjoyed teasing someone as much as I enjoyed teasing Caleb, but those moments when he finally snapped were gratifying on many levels. Anything I did to him, he always paid back by doubles. And he had learned far, far too quickly where and how to touch me to make me as desperate for him as I wanted him to be for me. For what seemed like a long time, there was nothing at all in the world but Caleb. His touch that hung in the perfect balance between rough and gentle, his lips in fierce kisses, the heat of his body against me and the sound of every whimper and gasp as we sought release. And finally, him whispering to me in a breathless, almost awe-filled voice. Aww. So cute! I love you. Caleb was lying pressed against my back, half curled against me as he placed gentle kisses to the back of my shoulder and neck. So cute! I can't, my, my teeth, the cavities, please. <laughs> How can a man be so spicy and so sweet at the same time? Ugh. Asleep. Hmm. What's the point of asking me that if I'm actually asleep? If you can be a brat, I guess that means you're not. Your observational prowess never ceases to amaze me. He scraped his teeth over my earlobe, grinning against the side of my head. I'm certain my prowess in several areas amazes you. I'm almost tempted to argue on principle. His arms tightened just a little. Don't, unless you're up for a reminder. I just laughed and snuggled back against him. <laughs> I'll let it go, this time. <laughs> He chuckled against the back of my neck, and I dozed off soon after feeling very, very content. Morgan! Five minutes! I know! I darted into the living room, flopping on the sofa to pull on one of my boots. Getting a late start today, of all days, was not a good sign. I fumbled with the buckle as Caleb watched with amusement. Peace negotiations on Sierra were not what I had in mind when I said I wanted minor missions for a while. I guess the council feels like two months is enough time for something major. Besides, we're just overseeing the talks, not leading them. Just a little show of force to make sure the provisional government and allied factions play nice. Why Sierra had to revolt now, of all times, was anyone's guess. But I guess revolutions didn't wait for convenient moments. I know you're aware already, but they're hoping we can close things quickly. They think the host is on the move again, and they want us prepared. And the researchers are waiting on my report regarding the Macquarie relic incident and the possibility of undoing the damage. You're a popular woman. It can't be helped for an overachiever like you. I stood, smoothing my uniform. I'm ready. He came over and pulled me in for a hug and a quick kiss. Don't stress out too much about today. Our team won't do anything but be there. After the Delphine situation, the reputation of the Queen's Guard went up. So that's all we have to do. I'm not nervous. I sit up on my toes to return the kiss. But thank you for trying to reassure me. We should go, unless you want to listen to Vaughn and Ari tag team whining at us for being late. I've never heard Ari whine. He masks it well, but he definitely whines. <laughs> I laughed as I followed him out of the apartment, making a mental note to change the passcode again since he'd figured out the last one, and locking him out now that he'd moved in was one of my new hobbies. <laughs> I love it. I love that so much. Oh my god! There you are! We were coming to hunt you down and drag you out of bed! Sorry, sorry, I overslept, it's my fault. Oh? This guy keep you up all night again? Why are you asking? Jealous? <laughs> More like I pity her. I mean, her poor back. She's not a rook like you. Can the two of you please stop? I concur. 
Regretfully, we will be late if we don't leave right now. Caleb gave me an amused look and mouthed the word whining. <laughs> I snickered as Ari sighed and turned back down the hallway. We'll head to the briefing room for a quick check-in before we go. She fell into step beside us and started talking about the current assignment. My hand found Caleb's, my nerves replaced by excitement and expectation. When I first came here, it felt like I might never settle in, and now I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Sometimes I was still sad about the opportunities I'd missed, the ones that had been taken away. There were nights I couldn't sleep because fear of the unknown ahead of me crept in and taunted me with the dangers and uncertainties of this job. But I couldn't deny the things I'd found, the opportunities I'd never have known existed, the people I had met were worth the struggle. Life had a strange flow to it, one that often didn't care what you wanted. It wasn't as if I'd moved from one path to a better one. It was just that I'd learned I could be happy on this path too. And that was enough. I squeezed Caleb's hand as we stepped into the briefing room for our check-in before leaving for Sierra. He leaned down to plant a quick kiss to my lips, and for a moment I just looked up at him, enjoying the fluttering sensation that always accompanied those small displays of affection. It was definitely enough. We did it! We made it to the end! Man, that was just a very solid route, all in all. I really, I really enjoyed it. I'm... I'm not sure where I'm going to put this. I don't think it's my favorite for a couple of, of reasons. I didn't find the plot as engaging as some of the others. I kind of found like the relic thing, I don't know. I, I felt it took a while for us to really like ramp up to danger mode. Like danger mode kind of just happened suddenly at the end. I didn't feel really any What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> my mind keeps being like, chaos! Like, no, you're, my mind's in chaos, but what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> like, there was no chaoticness going on. I didn't feel like we were in any real danger until the auction happened. Um, Caleb as a root is just super solid. He's like a perfect match for Morgan. They, they play off of each other super well. They're a very healthy couple. Um, yeah, I think up to this point, Kesa had been the one that I was like, oh, him and Morgan are, are really good together. But Caleb's giving Kesa a run for his money in that department, definitely. Yeah, I think, I think story-wise, Magna still has it for me. Um, I just found his route more engaging for me personally, because so much happened in his route like all the time. And that might even be why I feel like this one's kind of slower. Is that I was like, oh man, there's so many revelations happening. This was kind of more just like, okay, we already know who Brennan is. Uh, it's very cool that Morgan can now communicate with Array and technology and is translating stuff. That's super awesome. I think I feel a little sad for her in this end because I think she's in a better place than she was at the end of Ari's route. Where like she, it feels like she's very involved with her guard, which was nice to see. And look at our boy over there. Yeah, it was really nice to see her just meshed well. But she seems still like very trapped in some ways. Although at the same time, she's able to like go out of the tower, go out to eat, go out with her friends, which is awesome. I really liked that part a lot. So she, I think she's in a better place in Endgame than she was in Ari's route, but not as good as when she was in Magnus's route. Like, the, the council's still a bag of dicks. <laughs> and that doesn't seem like it's going to change anytime soon, unfortunately. Brennan's still at large, and he wasn't really that terrifying this time, because he was just kind of there for, like, one and a half chapters, and then was like, peace out, <laughs> and gone again. So him and Morgan didn't really have a thing. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about this one. Definitely, I think Caleb Caleb and Kesa are, are at the tops for uh, relationship with Morgan, though. Story... I'd almost put... I think Caleb just feels weird after Magnus's route for me. I think I'd almost do... Like, if I, if I were to recommend something, 
I think I would almost do like Ari, Kesa, Caleb, Jack, and then Magnus. Almost. Just just for story reveal stuff. Because we don't really know a lot about... It, Jack, I think Jack and Caleb are kind of interchangeable. Because you really do find like the major stuff about Sylvia in Jack's route. So you could, like, I think I would just, I would either switch Magnus and Caleb or Caleb and Jack around. Something like that. I don't know. But anyway, still, awesome route. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, Caleb is awesome. He made me laugh so much. <laughs> he has some very spicy scenes, which I enjoyed very much as well. And yeah, I just think him and Morgan are a delight and a wonderful couple. So yeah, there you go. That's my thoughts so far. I'm going to have to do some soul searching and really, really think and articulate better when my mind's not in chaos. <laughs> but with that being said, that is the passionate ending done. So now we'll move on to the sweet ending. Hopefully I'll see you guys there for that. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time, I will see you later. <laughs>